What's up everybody? Welcome back to the Center for Stingray Biology. Today we're going to do a feeding video, but we are not feeding stingrays. We are feeding the fish from the last couple of shipments that I brought in. Let's go check it out. We'll start off today's feeding with the oldest fish in the facility, which would be the fat noise. But let's see, where is he? He's he hiding. He's hiding. Oh my goodness. He's always out here. And the one time I want to film him, he's not coming out. You know what? Let me just drop one shrimp and see if I can bait him to come out. Because he's behind those tanks there. If he doesn't, we'll come back. Yeah, he's probably not going to come. I don't he think might... he's feeling it Oh, there it he today. goes. There he goes. Look, there he comes. Wait, don't, don't, don't scare him. There we go. See? He sees that shrimp. Is he gonna take it? Follow him. Boom. Okay, now we're gonna drop him off for him. Oh, don't run away. Come on, buddy, come back. I think he's feeling shy. Okay, that was interesting. He he was hiding and then I dropped the one shrimp and it lured him out. And now look, he's coming back and getting the rest. Well, at least he responded to the food and he came out. So let's move on and feed the rest of the fish. Um, you wanna do this way or you wanna do that way? Uh, let's just go that way. You wanna go this way, all right, come on. Let's go this way. All right, everybody. <laughs> so, I typically don't turn on the lights during feeding. So, can you see these fish, Tiff? Are they? Uh, it, yeah, they're clear. Is it clear? Yeah. Good it enough. Is. Yeah, it's good enough. Well, uh, you know what? I'll try turning on the lights. Oh. And then we'll give them a little bit of the shrimp. It's pretty. They're eating very well. Now I fed them a lot yesterday already. Let's see how their response is today. Oop. Yeah. All right, so they're still. Eating it all up, I see. I fed them a lot yesterday. I fed so much that my whole tank of water was cloudy. Uh, I learned something about these fish. If I don't feed them enough, they start to attack each other. And I started noticing some fish with some nipped fins oh, yeah, I see and that so one. forth, right? And I didn't have that before. So then this was the fix. I'm trying to fix it now, fatten them all up. They just keep going nonstop. Look, look at those two locked in on the one. Oh, okay, we missed it. Yeah. And uh, in, at first, you know, they weren't really taking to the food, but now they are. And now that they're eating so well, they're gonna start growing really fast. And I'm gonna get some fish that are bigger than others, which is gonna lead to another problem, I think. I see this one's a little bit more skinny. Yeah. Down here. See. But he's getting the food. And then there's the bigger ones. They all came in at the same size. So oh, yeah, that we're one's gonna have good. to manage this situation okay so that's that we got over here the albino geos okay but this one i definitely can't turn on the light because if i turn on the light go slowly it's going to freak them out don't worry they'll come out they'll come out back up okay. i'm slowly introducing the food to them and they will come out once they see it so let's wait let's sit still and watch as the food falls see here they come and we're just starting them off because, you know, they just came in and honestly, I don't know what they were being fed at the breeder's place, but I would most likely guess that uh, they were probably feeding this them uh, dry food. But if they were good to the fish, I'm sure they were feeding it maybe frozen blood worms and other meteor types of food. But you see, once they get started, they're all coming out. These guys are fighting for the food. Okay. Now, I'm going to turn on the flash and see if it spooks them, but I'm trying to give you guys a better look oh well it gave them the uh, let me shut it off see that, that freaked them out all right so that's that now up there I need my step ladder we're gonna feed these albino silver arowanas now and we know they are carnivorous fish and I typically don't use pellet food on carnivorous fish but when these first came in I, I wasn't prepared with food and I had uh, a bunch of this Hikari floating sticks right here show everybody so I gave it to them and they took to it right away. Why don't you pass me the camera, Tiff? Because you're too short and you're all the way down there. A lot of people like to feed pellet food because of the convenience. So here you go. Albino silver arowanas eating pellet food, which would be a major convenience for everybody at home to feed these guys and not have to always prepare frozen foods. All right, I'm not gonna overdo it because again, yesterday I fed them a lot and yesterday I actually fed them shrimp. So we have another tank over here, and just to be fair, I'm going to give these guys some as well. And once they realize it's in there, they're all going to start coming, pouncing over to the food. Oops. 
There we go, see? Now they realize it's there. And I apologize for the reflection, but if you guys are looking at the fish, you won't see the reflection. <laughs> so they finished everything up, nice and clean. That's the way I like it. I don't like leftover food. I don't like having to go in and clean up leftover food. So that's the way I feed. Uh, just enough so that they got food in their stomach. I don't like to feed them until they're um, bulging, unless there's a reason to. Like yesterday, I had to feed the, the Goliath tiger fish a little bit more. And now let's, oh, we have the gunch down here. There we go, they responded, yep, yeah, there we go. And again, these are a fish that, if I turn on the lights. All right, well, I apologize for that. It went out of focus right when they came out to eat. But anyways, we'll, we'll just move on. You'll see there's shrimp down there and uh, I'll come back later. These are one of those fish that it's hard to catch them actually coming out to eat it. But once I walk away, they're gonna come out and eat it. Now, um, all right, let's, 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 let's do some pellets over here. All right, these guys are the shears. There they go. Yep, attacking it. See? So it's just tricky. I'm sure, you know, if they get used to the light being on all the time, then they'll be fine. But like I said, I normally don't have the lights on, but now I'm going to throw more. Now that they're eating, they go nuts. This, this tank is probably one of the most fun for me to feed just because the way they swarm like that, you see? Yeah. And again, I'm not going to overfeed. I made the mistake of overfeeding this tank the other day because it was so much fun. And when I came back, they threw up all their pellets, okay? Oh, because no. pellets is a dry food. And once it hits the water, it starts to um, puff up or saturate. So then they ate the food when it was dry and it started swelling up in their bellies and I guess they couldn't hold it. And then they just started throwing up. The whole tank oh. was loaded with food on the bottom. Um, okay, where's my food? No, um, you put it down there. Here we go. All right. Now these parrots, of course, they eat pellet food, but... Today's a special day, so I'm gonna give them some shrimp. Oh. And they attack it very aggressively. Immediately. Just the way I like it. Okay, very nice. And then we're gonna jump over here to this tank over here, and the same thing. You ready? Yep. Here we go. Oof. Give them a little bit more. They're all ready for it. Yep. They're pigs. Pigs, I tell you. <laughs> they can eat, they can finish this whole bucket if I gave it to them, but I'm going to stop now. <clears throat> um, where are we at now? There's these guys up here. And okay. Then, oh. All right, so the angelfish. Yep. I need the viber bites on the other side. Can you get that bag uh, on yeah, the other sure. side? So these are fairly simple to feed as well. I just give them these little viber bites. And voila, that's it. That's enough for all of them. So I gotta throw in a little bit more extra food in there because I forgot about these guys. And uh, this way they can scavenge or scavenge on the food, right? Isn't it ravage or savage? Ra no, see, now you're showing your intelligence to everyone. It's, it's, it's scavenge. I, it's not savage, it's sca scavenge. Like, 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 like a, a scavenge, scavenge hunt? Like a scavenger hunt, yes. Oh, uh, okay. Okay, so I'm gonna push these food down so that those guys can uh, get to it. Of course, they're probably not gonna jump on it right now. Oh, well, maybe they are. They're already starting to move around a little bit. All right, so that's that. We're not gonna wait for them to eat. Um, we have some albino clown knives up here, but they're very shy. And uh, it's, I've been having a tough time feeding them as well. I always have to come back and clean up their food yeah, I don't think they're gonna eat. I'll show you. They're all huddled back there behind the, the filter. We'll pass on these guys for now. And uh, what it is is because this light is on. I asked Rod, what should I do to try to get these guys to eat? And he told me that these, these fish are nocturnal in nature. Typically, he likes to leave the food in there and at night, they come out to eat it when they feel safe. 
So my mistake was putting it on the top tank and then that room light is always on. I'm willing to bet that had I brought them down and put them on a lower tank in the dark, they would respond better. And I do have proof of that because the other shipment that came in the other day, I put it on the bottom tank up front and they don't hide like that. They're like all over the place. So let's head on over there. Oh, I was wondering why they were jumping. They see a little pellet food up here and they kept jumping at it. Yeah. Okay, let's go. I think we're done here. Um, actually, you know what? I have a couple of electric eels I need to feed. They're down here. Oh yeah, those little buddies. I'm not gonna feed too much. You ready? Come on in. And let's see. Oh, it's doing the focusing thing again. There they go. Boom, 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 boom. Very aggressive eating, as they should be, because I've had them here for almost a year now. Look at how much they've grown. They came in at like seven inches. I think they're pushing a good 15 inches now. Um, Let me give them a little bit more since they're so ravenous on the food. <laughs> it's better to put a little bit at a time so there's competition for it, you see? If I just throw in a whole bunch, then they may uh, realize that, oh, you know what? I can take my time, there's plenty of food here. I'm wondering if they sense the light because they use electrical impulses to sense everything. So maybe that's why the light is not freaking them out. All right, he's done. Okay. All right, so now look, show everybody down here. You can turn on the light. Just by going to the other side and coming back, more than 50% of the food is gone. There's only like one, two, three, four pieces left. I remember there was a lot more left. There was a lot more. I put two, I put two and a half spoonfuls. Yep. And now it's all gone. Just like that in a matter of minutes just simply walking away. So we're done here. Let's go to the front now. All right, so now a lot of the fish in this front room just came in maybe, what, four days ago, uh, right? Three, just, four. Just, just, just this past weekend. With new fish, we gonna have to do whatever it really takes to get them to start eating first, to get that first meal in them so that they can start getting their strength up. So in this case, over here, this tank, are the Imperial Loaches. Um, I tried pellet food already and it didn't work. So now what I'm giving them is frozen blood worms. Get closer, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm just gonna melt it like this and let it settle to the bottom because obviously they're not gonna come up to the top to eat it. Let me throw some here. And I'm trying not to freak them out also so that they will eat. So by doing this, I'm just getting the food spread out everywhere because obviously these loaches are spread out everywhere and let me just release this little chunk back there now let's step back and now let's start watching if they eat now i know they'll eat because i've seen them eat this before the question is are they going to eat for you guys there we go right there in the middle of the screen oh there see they're starting to pick at it right here with this guy starting to pick at it a little bit there we go see and it's as simple as that once we start getting food into their system they're gonna become more active more responsive because they were purged for a really long time before the shipping and that in my opinion kind of gets makes them like shut down so once we get them going again and they're getting used to the new tank uh, the way my filter runs the way the water current runs they will start doing better. And at the same time, um, they won't be as shy. Right now, I mean, let's see. They're kind of nipping at it, but yeah. they're all still in the corners. They're nipping around. And then eventually, I hope I can get them to eat um, dry food, because I don't want to keep feeding them this food. Now, these guys, these flower horns. Okay. I'm gonna show you how well they eat now. Okay, we always knew this guy ain't well. This guy, the color faded the other day because I brought in the new fish and I threw in one of these Wells catfish right here. Get right here in the corner. I thought they would get along, but boy was I wrong. They went at it. The Wells was biting the, the flower horn. The flower horn was biting the Wells. Look at his stomach. The flower horn stomach is deflated now. I, I think the, the Wells grabbed onto his belly and now it's deflated. And he turned completely pale. But now 
just today his color started coming back on the back half of the body. The red is starting to come back. Yeah, I see but that. the other day, the last two days, he was completely gray, like pale gray. Oh. Okay, now look what's happening on this side. He sees the shrimp through the tank. It's a very, very big turnaround in his behavior since the last time I showed you the way he was eating. Look at this. Look at this. He's ready. He's ready. But this guy was really shy before and barely eating his food. Oh. And now look at him. He's a monster. And this is something I wanted to show everybody at home. Because he used to just take the shrimp and chew it and spit it out. Now you can't feed him enough. So he's going to clean up all of that with no problems and I'll probably have to give him some more. There you go. He swallowed that piece. Okay. No, now more. See? There we go. And this is the way, in my book, the way a flower horn should respond. The way it was before, shy in the back and I had to walk away. And, but now, he's good. He's good. Yeah, they interact with each other too. Okay. Let's go to this wells because obviously this guy, once he saw us, he came right out. So we're going to drop some food for him. And there he goes. Oh. Two pieces at a time. Yep. Uh, these catfish are very ferocious uh, feeders. I, I believe the ones we had at Rod's place before ate some very expensive fish, if I remember. <laughs> um, okay, so basically a lot of these tanks, I had the wells all separated. See, I had them one in a tank. Um, when I made the unboxing video, I had dumped them all into one tank together and they were kind of going at it, so I had to separate it. Well, he's camera shy. He ate one shrimp and he swam off to the back, but he'll come around. So instead of uh, wasting my time dropping a little shrimp in every one of these tanks, I'll get to that later. This tank right here. Let me open up the cover. Why don't you come to this side? Look at that. They're already all coming out. These are the arapaimas. It took me some time to train them, okay? But now they're very well trained and they come out. I can't turn on the lights. If I tried this the other day, if I turn on the lights, they freak out and they won't eat. Now here, I'm feeding them these frozen little uh, bait, oh my goodness, feeder fish. Are they coming out here, see? Yep. They're just killing it. I'm gonna throw a little bit more. They're attacking each other for it. Yes. There we go. Boom, boom, boom. That's the third handful, right? Or the fourth handful? Uh, most likely, yeah. And they're going to clean it all up. I, I didn't feed them for a couple of days because beginning of the week is, uh, is our shipping days. So they've been purged for a little bit. So with fish eating well like this, they're going to grow really fast and uh, do really well in your tank. Okay, so here. Here's the knife fish. You see? Mm -hmm. They're all at the front of the tank. They're not hiding like the ones in the back. But again, they're not eating yet. So I'm gonna try some of these little feeder fish and see if they take to it. So it's just about enticing them to eat, but I don't wanna put in too much because I don't wanna fall in the water. So I'm just gonna drop this little bit in there and whoever eats, eats. And slowly, as they settle in, they will eventually all start to eat. I mean, they're sniffing it. Um, yeah, they're sniffing it, right? Look at this guy. Look, he's smelling it. He's like, hey, what is that? I didn't expect them to eat, but I always, but I, we do have to give them something so that eventually they will start eating and start recognizing the food. Uh, the point of showing you this was to show that they weren't hiding like, like in the other tank. Is that everything? I believe so. I think so, too. I mean... What about the big, big guy? The platinum? The platinum? Yeah. What platinum? The, the platinum guy, um, the one who looked like the yellow fish. Where did we put it? Uh, over here. Over here? Where'd it go? Where'd He's right there. He's right there. Where? He's platinum like a ghost. I know what platinum looks like. He's not there. Well, we named him Casper and he just like disappeared. No. All right. The platinum is gone. It's sold. Okay. Aww. Yeah, you see, it didn't last very long. When it comes to rare fish like that, there are people who have been wanting them and waiting for, for them for a long time, and that when it becomes available, you just have to jump on it. Like I said previously, 
If you don't jump on it, it's gone. Had I not jumped on it, then my customer wouldn't have been able to get it. Maybe I thought we were going to keep it. I really did. And then Rod wanted to keep it too. We had it all planned out. We were going to make this big tank all black back and bottom with only platinum fish. We were going to get like the whitest, whitest fish with black eyes, just different types of species. So that that noise was going to be in there. We were planning on getting um, another one of those platinum stingrays, which is all white and black eyes. And then possibly, you know, a couple of other things as they become available and just make a really, really special platinum tank. He was so pretty. He looked really good. I know, I know. But hey, right? It is what it is. <laughs> and it's a business. <laughs> oh. Okay. So, um... Yeah, sorry to end this video on a sad note like that, but, you know, at least it went to a great home. I'll be honest with you, the person who took it originally did not want it. He wanted the yellow one, okay? I offered him both at the same time and he chose the yellow one. Now, after seeing the yellow one and seeing the white one, he came back and said, no, I want the white one too. So it went to the same guy. I'm happy for him. I'm sure they look amazing in his tank. And, uh, you know, that's what we're here for. To help people get their fish and bring some joy to their lives, right? Yeah, so, I guess oh, so. and by the way, um, we got to talk about the Christmas toy drive. Okay, Rod wanted me to mention it here on my channel as well. We, we, we started this toy drive and it's on the Predatory Fins website for anybody who wants to donate. What we're going to do is uh, pull up this money and take that and buy toys with it and distribute it to the poorer communities around uh, around the Boca area or where, where Rod is in the Florida area. I'm not exactly sure what areas he's gonna be going through. And um, I think uh, Paul is uh, contributing in a big way as well. I think um, you should expect some videos from them. They're gonna go toy shopping really soon <laughs> <laughs> and load up all their trucks. So if you guys out there who want to contribute and, and support this effort, it will be much appreciated. I'll put the link right here on the screen and also uh, it will be in the description below. You can go, it's already set up, you can donate $5, $10, $20, $100 $10, or multiples of $5, 10 20 if you want to contribute more. But it's actually going really, really well for those who want us to cough up the money instead of you guys. We, we, we made the pledge that for every $100 in sales, we will donate $10, okay? So just go on the website, shop away. Uh, I think we're having some sales this week as well, some holiday sales. So in the end, you guys are gonna make out on it. You're gonna get discounted fish, you're gonna be contributing a holiday toy drive, and it's gonna be coming out of our pockets. So ho, 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 right? <laughs> well, bye-bye to that. All right, so again, thank you guys, and um, stay tuned for the next episode, and happy holidays. I forgot one really important fish. I was too busy talking to you guys about the holiday drive. Mr. Goonch, Mr. Exantic Goonch in the back there. Now that he's in the back, there's a good chance if I throw the food right on top of him, he'll eat it right away. Oh. Did he get it? Yeah, he yep, got there it. There he goes. So like the other Goonch in the back, they don't like it when people watch them eat, right? Who likes it when you people watching you? Right? Nobody wants to, people looking at them eat. <laughs> so the goonch are no different. And I'm learning that as well. Actually, I'm learning a lot about all the fish that we are bringing in. And it's kind of fun. I feel like an amateur a little bit. Okay. <laughs> because all these different fish, I'm learning who gets along with what. You know, who eats what. How to get this guy to eat. How to get that guy to eat. And it's all these little tricks. This is where experience comes into play. And hopefully, the experience I'm trying to gain won't cost me too much money because <laughs> every mistake is also, uh, there's a financial cost to it. I don't know, but I'm learning.